Hi and welcome to Neat AI. This week I've been playing around with the wonderful organic shapes you get when using a couple of simple equations. This is the simulation of two virtual chemicals reacting and diffusing on a 2D grid using the Gray-Scott model. The reaction diffusion system described here involves two general chemicals whose concentration at a given point in space is referred to by variables A and B. If we take this green square to represent a pixel, I can initialize the concentration at that point randomly. There's no simulation of individual molecules, of course. All I'm doing is setting the concentrations of the two chemicals. What I need to do next is work out what those concentrations are going to be at that point for the next frame. And this is done using just two equations. Let's take chemical A as an example. Its current concentration is 0.15, so I can just plug that straight in. Next is its diffusion term. This is the rate at which chemical A will diffuse through the medium, and it specifies that A will increase in proportion to the Laplacian of A. The dA component is just a scaling factor set to a value between 0 and 1. Here I've set it to 1. The Laplacian is performed with a 3x3 convolution with center weight minus 1, adjacent neighbors of 0.2, and diagonals of 0 0.05. And all that simply means is that I take a 3x3 matrix or kernel, center it over the pixel in question, multiply the pixel values for chemical A by the corresponding values in the kernel, and then add up the results. The next term is the reaction rate. The reaction shown above requires one part A and two parts of B. Such a reaction takes place at a rate proportional to the concentration of A times the square of the concentration of B, and it actually converts A into B. The final term is the replenishment term. Since the reaction uses up chemical A and generates chemical B, all of A will eventually get used up, unless there is a way to replenish it. The replenishment term says that A will be increased at a rate proportional to the difference between its current level and 1. As a result, even if the other two terms had no effect, 1 would be the maximum value for A. The constant F is the feed rate, and represents the rate of replenishment. And when you add it all up, you get the value for A at that pixel point for the next frame. Comparing the two equations, the biggest difference is in the last term, where we have to introduce a kill rate. The third term in the B equation is the diminishment term, and without it, the concentration of chemical B could increase without limit. In practice, B could be allowed to accumulate for a long time, but it naturally diffuses out of the system through the same or a similar process as that which introduces the new supply of chemical A. The diminishment term is proportional to the concentration of B that is currently present, and also to the sum of the two constants, namely the feed rate F and kill rate K. The Laplacian for B uses the same kernel values as A, but of course is applied to the concentration for chemical B at the pixel being examined, and in the example here it yields a value of 0.82. So I now know the concentrations for both chemicals at this pixel in the next frame. Plotting it on screen simply means taking their average and scaling it across the RGB components to give me a grayscale color. You then simply rinse and repeat for all pixels in the frame, store them in an array, and then do the same over and over again to see how the chemicals diffuse and react together. Tweaking the various parameters within the equations can result in some weird and wonderful shapes and patterns. These shapes emerge by making small changes to things like the diffusion rates of the chemicals, as well as the feed and removal rates. In the example shown, chemical A is white, I've added a few rings of chemical B in black and set it running. With the settings for feed and kill rates shown on the right, alongside the initial diffusion rates for both chemicals. Making small changes to the feed and kill rates for the chemicals can result in a great variety of shapes and patterns being produced. This one here is known as the maze. It's done on a pixel by pixel basis across the entire frame, which means that each pixel on screen is therefore a mixture of both chemicals. Solitons are another popular one. They resemble little creatures that move about, reproducing by continuously splitting in two until they fill the screen.
it's always nice to code these up yourself and get them running. If you don't have time, there's loads of online options to play around with. This is a nice one with built-in patterns, and you can mess about with the initialization variables. As always, thanks for watching.